Well, sh <laughs> this is either a Halloween miracle or a Halloween disaster. <laughs> First off, don't do what I do. I am functionally insane. Still my favorite YouTube comment ever. <laughs> it is really hard to make all this work with multiple pets and you need the time and you need to be willing to put in the work. So don't do what I do. And my, and my jeans are not your scratching post, Miss Thing. Miss Thing, I have to explain to the peoples what happened to you and how we found you. But yeah, seriously, don't, don't do what I do. <laughs> I, am, I am nuts. I am completely insane. Insane. Look at that. Look at that. You miss purr purr. So the other day Miss Clea got super excited at the fence and I looked down and I saw this like whoosh of kittens and I was like, oh my god, what if, what if one of them was her? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I go over and start talking to one of the neighbors and she's just as frustrated with the cat issue as I am because she keeps finding dead kittens and, and even dead adult cats everywhere. Hi. So we were, you know, talking. I was holding one of the kittens. Well, the other neighbor popped out of their house, and here she comes. She just popped out of their house. So she has been in that house this whole time. Apparently, that house, their daughter had let in 10 of the strays, including the kittens, and she, her, the mother came home to seeing her daughter feeding all the ferals inside the house. So both of those neighbors do not have any claim to any of the cats. I asked her about the one producing them and they said that she doesn't do anything with them so I can go ahead and do what I want. I can take them to TNR if, if I, man, kitty snot. I can <laughs> try to do the TNR program with all of them. So whoever I trap, like it's, it's kind of like game on. That's if I can trap all of them. It's been discussed that there's at least like 20 or so, if not more, in, in all of the neighborhood. So Fleabag, as I called her before, was an understatement. I have not seen an infest infestation of fleas since I was a groomer. They were literally like sucking every ounce of blood out of this poor little kitten. And um, yes. So she got a bath for a start. Now the neighbor told me that she was three to four months old and I questioned that. To me she looked more like an eight week old kitten. So I found a clinic that I thought was going to be cheaper than my vet and it ended up being about the same price but I'm glad I took her to the clinic because I really needed to get her checked out. So they agreed that she is probably 8 to 10 weeks old. She is 1.6 pounds as of right now. She screamed bloody murder when they poured the alcohol on her legs so we could test her for like FIV and feeling leukemia and all that fun stuff. She has been having really explosive diarrhea, so that's another reason I rushed her to the clinic because it's like I know something was happening, whether it was worms or something worse. She tested negative for all the worms, but she tested very positive for coccidia. Now, if you don't know what coccidia is, it's an infectious internal parasite. Um, it can be very deadly to kittens. Um, they actually said if it was another week, she probably would have passed away. So I'm assuming the other two kittens that are left at that house are probably not going to make it. And there's still a chance this little one won't make it either. I mean, she's on medication now for it. She's uh, quarantined mainly to a huge dog crate and two rooms upstairs. She's getting out time and my cats are actually indoor outdoor. I used to always just do indoor with my cats, but when we got Talia, she was a rescue and she definitely came from a colony of kittens and she was happier being outside. She loves being out there and she's got her own little routine since we uh, adopted her and when we did that Fang Fang wanted to go out too. He's like well she can go out. I want to go out and that's just how it is. But I'm worried now since this one tested positive for coccidia it's like are my cats going to get it out there and it's usually more it's more rare that adult cats will get it but if they're sharing litter boxes and things like that they can still get it even as an adult, but it definitely is deadly for kittens. So she has her own litter box in her dog bedroom, dog crate bedroom that we have for her. Other than the parasite that's making her butt explode, the vet said she looks very healthy considering she's from a colony of kitties. 
Yes, madam. Yes, madam. She's only been with us two days and um, she's very eager to explore, but I can't let her explore the entire house. She's too tiny and with the parasite, she is going to have to be basically on partial quarantine for the next two weeks. The neighbor told me that she was an absolute demon, that she was a hellion type cat and she is so happy I took her and all I kept thinking is I'm extremely happy I took her because that household, I have seen that woman's, I don't know if it's her boyfriend or husband, actually whip their dog with like an old car antenna. It looks like those old metal antennas off of like you know cars from like the 70s and 80s where it like pulls up or whatever but I've seen him beat the dog with it and all I kept thinking is all these cats in that house with that guy like I'm very very glad she popped out and that we found her again. Say I'm relieved. Yes I am relieved. Are you relieved? I think you're a little bit relieved. So her fleas are almost completely gone. All that I see left on her is some flea dander like some flea eggs. So just one bath and one treatment. I had to make sure I got treatment from the clinic because all the flea medicine I have here is for kittens or can be used only on kittens who are five pounds or more. And she's not, she's 1.6, she's so tiny. She's a tiny little thing. There has been a lot of extra vacuuming. There's also going to be some steam cleaning involved. <laughs> there's, there's gonna be a lot of cleaning involved. I'm trying not to let the dog spend too much time with her like one-on-one. -on -one because I am worried, um, especially with Sully being go what's going on with him. But we're on medication and we'll be rechecking her in a couple weeks um, and hoping that the parasite's gone. But she did extremely well in the car with me. She did extremely well at the clinic, even though she screamed bloody murder the whole time they were working on her. And she's a champ when it comes to taking her medication. Now believe it or not, which I'm sure most of you aren't going to believe this, we are not 100% on keeping her. I feel like a liar just even saying that, but I did find a place who does spays for $50, or I can just take her into the TNR program and throw her outside with the rest of the community out there. We haven't decided which we're going to do yet, um, but I have four months to decide, and in four months, if I can't come up with 50 bucks, then I don't deserve her. Okay, okay, no paws on, on my mouth. I don't want any of your nasty parasites. So she definitely has a reservation here <laughs> until she's at least seven months old because just in case her feralness is hiding right now and she's just totally faking all this cute, nice sweetness, if she becomes too feral acting, she will go outside. Like Jack and Emma, we both tried with those cats to bring them in our home and they were just too wild. They, they were too, I don't know how to explain feral cats. It's kind of like demons on speed, maybe. <laughs> like, it might not work out with her. <laughs> She's like, look, I make you a liar. So the goal is to, is to get her bonded with us enough to keep her on the back porch. God, she is milking it. She is milking it. But she is going to be inside and taken care of <sighs> until she's at least seven months and then we'll take care of her either inside or outside or whatever happens with her. So yeah, welcome home Sally, if that's the name we're sticking with because I think you all actually chose her name. I still like the name Samantha a lot for her, but Sally does seem to fit with her little Halloween colors. I thought Morticia too, but uh, you just don't look like a Morticia. <laughs> You're just too sweet. Not that Morticia's not sweet, because she's one of my favorite ladies in the world. Yeah. Are you going to survive, Miss Thing? I think you're a survivor. Do you think you're a survivor? That's our little update on Miss Thing. Miss Sassy Sally. And, um, yeah, I am going to go feed her now and uh, re-vacuum my chair in this room because I know there's still fleas somewhere and go see my pups because uh, they are very upset that mommy is doing video time without them. <laughs> anyway, off to do all the, all the stuff. <laughs> but remember to click all the buttons and uh, we will see you in the next video. Can you say bye-bye? Like, don't touch my paws. Say bye, peoples.